And we are back. The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas for Dell Tech World 2025. Daniel, it's been a great show. Surprisingly, we're talking about AI from client PCs, industrial edge to the data center. Yeah, we knew this was going to be the case, Pat. These technologies proliferate quickly, but not that quickly. But one of the things that's been great about this year is sort of seeing it all being brought to life, right? Yeah. Early on, there's a lot of kind of building out the infrastructure. We're seeing these 747s full of racks being delivered and they're getting plugged in and we're turning it on and we're tuning these things up. But this week, you know, starting with Michael's keynote, we're hearing a lot more about the customer and how they're applying it and getting value and ultimately how we as consumers are getting real measurable value from AI. That's right. It's one thing, you know, to stand up a, a CSP and the type of infrastructure that they have. It's a whole different ball uh, a game to go into the enterprise data center and then the enterprise edge. I can't imagine a better person to talk about this than Arthur Lewis. Arthur, great to see you. Great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Heard a lot of great stuff. A lot of talk about disaggregated infrastructure. Uh, it's it's, a, it's a, good, a good time to be in tech. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, be, behind the scenes, we were talking to Arthur a little bit about, you know, uh, working out and bench pressing, but I think the new real Iron Man, the new world's strongest man is going to be, can you deadlift in one of these 72 node racks? That is, yes. These things are pretty that, heavy. That's the ultimate flex right there. The ultimate flex is I can lift the rack single-handedly. Yeah. Uh, Arthur, it's great to see you though. As I said, kind of in the, in the preamble, AI is red hot. You know, a lot of customer centricity here, but talk, tell us a little bit, you're running, you know, ISG for all of Dell. What are you seeing and hearing? Yeah, look, I mean, this is, you know, as we talked about last year, what, you know, one of the most interesting times in, in my lifetime. I've been in the industry for 30 years and never have I been so excited because, you know, with, you know, moving from perception to generative to reasoning AI, you now have a technology that is giving customers the ability to make use of their most valuable asset, their data. It all comes down to data. And so, you know, customers are taking a look at understanding, you know, ROI, understanding the use case, um, understanding their model strategy, but really it comes down to understanding their data strategy and how they have to re-architect their data center because it's clear that the data center of the last three decades ain't the data center of the next three decades. And so customers are wrestling with, how do I get started small as I think about re-architecting -arch my data for the future, my, my data center for the future? Yeah, I mean, you can't just put uh, a Grace Blackwell, a GB300, and stick it in uh, a data center that was architected five, 10, you know, whatever years ago. Um, what should they be thinking about, though, when re-architecting it? Because uh, they don't have the ability to just go clean slate and build a new data center. In fact, they don't want to just go out and build new data centers. How can they leverage what they have and protect those investments uh, and make other investments uh, if they need to? Yeah, so you know, what, what we like to you know, talk to enterprise customers is about you know, smart, small, start small, but think about you know, sort of the long game. Because at the end of the day, again, it kind of comes down to you know, what is your data strategy? Because obviously data feeds artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence requires a lot of premium grade uh, data, right, in order to feed it. So we like to talk about how do you think about standing up private clouds, which are going to be incredibly important for the future? How do you stand up an AI platform uh, for your underlying unstructured, structured data as well, your ingest data? I mean, think about it. Effectively cleaning, prepping, ingesting, querying, and ultimately securing data across diverse data sets becomes an incredibly complicated task, right? So it starts with disaggregated infrastructure. How do you think about your data platform all really tied back to your data strategy, right? So that, that's kind of how we think about and it. Can I just thank you for bringing up data strategy? I think you and I had a conversation two and a half years ago. Uh, both of us acknowledged, you know, it was a challenge, but now you're, you're doing a lot about that. It, I Bravo. Mean, it, it, yeah, no, it's, it's, well, yeah, and there's a lot yet to be done. We've yeah. done a lot and there's a lot to be done because, again, if you really think about it, it the, the world's value sits in all of this data, and today, 80% of that data sits in cold backup. That's right. right. Think about a world where you have silos broken down, everything connected, the majority of the world storage sitting in hot and warm tiers, constantly in circulation, feeding these AI engines, feeding these AI engines, feeding these agents. I mean, you're going to have thousands of agents running through the data center, performing millions of tasks on a daily basis. Right. This requires 
a connected system. Silos of the past absolutely have to be dismantled and customers need to be thinking about yeah, that. It's kind of interesting, Arthur, a couple of weeks ago at, uh, at, at Think, uh, Arvind Krishna, CEO of IBM, said 99% of enterprise data had not, been, had not touched AI yet. So, I mean, the 80% you're mentioning, and also it sounds like the vast majority of the rest of the data in enterprises, so it's such a big opportunity uh, for you and, and what you're doing. But, you know, to Pat's point about, you know, um, thank you for talking about data. You know, this is not, it's, it's interesting because this isn't really a new problem. I mean, we had this, you know, big data era, the, fir the first part of the platform era, the analytics era, the advanced analytics era, the machine learning era, by the way, which is kind of a lot of what AI has become. And for whatever reason, this whole, this whole phase, like enterprises never really got their data right. I mean, you know, are you seeing something different now? Are you, is, is AI maybe an enabler of that? Is the fact that unstructured data can be more immediately closer to compute and utilized in its form? Like, are we getting there? Yeah, I yeah, know, absolutely. Like I said, you know, you move from, you know, deep learning to machine learning to sort of perception to now you get these long thinking reasoning models and, you know, the outcomes that you get from applying AI to your data are exponentially different than they were five years ago, right? And you look at across any industry, across any type of use case, right? Artificial intelligence is going to raise human cognition because humans are not going to have to focus on the mundane tasks you know, that they think about doing on a daily basis. They're going to be up, able to up-level their thinking to focus on higher order problems. So it's going to make everybody smarter. It's going to make everybody better. And you know what we say is, you know, for enterprises that say, well, I'm going to be a fast follower and let someone else figure it out, they're kind of dead in the water, right? The AI revolution is not a spectator sport. Yeah. You got to get on the bus, you got to start small, you got to practice, you got to learn, you got to build your skill sets, you got to enable key partners, and you got to start to figure it out. Are you sort of indicating, though, that there was an inflection? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious, like the era of the mid teens where we were all piping big data and talking about our company runs better because we're using data better, right? It sounds like most of it never, that didn't really materialize, but you're kind of saying the AI inflection, if I'm hearing you right, is that the value is so meaningful material now that companies really can't any longer sort of kick the can down the road. They have to modernize their data center, to be ready for AI adoption, or they're, they're going to, if I heard you right, basically they're going to fall behind really quick. It, it, it's an eye-opening exercise because, you know, when you sit down and you talk to enterprise customers, you know, every question leads to an answer, leads to five questions, leads to five answers, leads to 10 more questions. And what customers are realizing is, not only do I have to modernize my data center, I need to modernize my internal operations, right? Because I need to ensure that all of my data is available and discoverable to be able to analyze it, process it, and actually apply artificial intelligence to it, right? So I think there is an inflection point where now you see the tangible value of using your data with artificial intelligence and the outcomes and the productivity gains to be had that people can't sit on the sidelines anymore. So let's get into some nuts and bolts, right? I mean, I, I, I profoundly believe in everything that we've discussed so far. What I'm trying to figure out though is, what is it when I modernize it, how does that actually make me go quicker? Or is it really just saying you can't do modern day AI without re-architecting? Or can I actually do this quicker if I re I, I, I'm wondering if you could even do this without re-architecting, because it would just be, it would be slow, it would be expensive, and it would be very highly complex and rigid. Other than that, it's great. Yeah, no, you can absolutely. Simple enough. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can, <laughs> you can absolutely do it without re-architecting it. The question is to what extent can you actually do it, right? And like what we counsel customers is, hey, you got to kind of pick five or 10 different use cases, smart, start small, build it out to really understand what a new architecture looks like for you. Because, you know, from my perspective, and, you know, this may come off, you know, sounding bad, but, you know, in, for many years, I think data centers were viewed as a cost center, right? And when you think about a cost center as a business leader, you think about how do I optimize it yeah. for cost? In the future, there's no question that a data center becomes a value center. It becomes an enter the intelligent enterprise. And when you think about a value center, you start thinking about how do I invest and augment and build out yes. more capabilities. So I think customers kind of get, you're not going to kind of do like a clean sheet exercise, blueprint everything and do a wholesale, pull everything out and move everything in. You got to build a plan. You have to have a strategy. You got to start small. You got to start thinking about the use case, but you got to start thinking about the long game because, you know, last year, you know, we were talking about generative AI. Now we're talking about these reasoning models. We didn't 
talk about tree of thought logic a year ago, right? So what's going to come next year that's, right. that's the equivalent of a reasoning model? Because AI is the worst today that it's ever going to be. Yeah, I mean, even something simple, not simple, but server consolidation. I mean, you get 20 to 1 consolidation and you have this energy, right, power uh, that you could devote into putting into GPUs or accelerators or, or, or anything like that. No, it, it, it is daunting and, and I'm sure you could ask this question, which is, well, wait a second, I talked to the, 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 the CSPs and they're telling me I can only do this uh, in the public cloud. Michael was very provocative and I, I do agree with him when he said uh, on stage uh, that it, it is going to be low cost. You ha do have more control. How much of a, how much of a reality are, are we in here that we can do all this stuff on premises? Well, let's start with the fundamental fact that 85% of the world's data sits on-prem today. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, so let, let's start with that. So, you know, we believe strongly and we've seen and have a lot of proof points that AI is absolutely going to follow the data. Yeah. And when you think about where the data is going to be created in the future, it's going to be created on-prem. Yeah. Right. And so customers are taking a look at cost, security, and performance as kind of like the three measures here. Um, you know, definitely cost probably 60 to 100% more expensive to, to run in the cloud. You're going to have higher levels of latency. Your performance, you're not going to be able to hit your SLAs on the tokens that you want to generate based on the yeah. specific use case. And security becomes a really big issue, right? Because, you know, people need to fundamentally understand the technology and ensure that there's strong security and governance across everything. Because, you know, again, generative AI, now these reasoning models, this is kind of like sequencing yeah. your DNA. Like, you know, are you really going to want to put this stuff in the cloud? Because you're not just putting data in the cloud, you're now putting insights into the cloud. Right, and that scares a lot of customers. But ultimately, they don't have to put it in the cloud because 85% of the world's data sits on-prem. That's yeah. where it's going to sit. So you're not doing this alone. I've seen a lot of partners, partners that I would never have expected for you to partner with, like Google, running Google Gemini uh, on your infrastructure. Uh, t tell me more about this new, new breed of AI ecosystem that you're building. Yeah, so you know the, the AI factory would not and could not exist without a very strong ecosystem of partners. And we'll be announcing uh, joint innovations with NVIDIA, with AMD, with Intel, with Meta, with Mistral, with Hugging Face, with Glean, with Red Hat, uh, with ENY, with Accenture, with Deloitte. And I'm so incredibly proud that we're going to talk about our collaboration to bring Gemini models on-prem for Dell customers. No, it is. Uh, I mean, say that again. My Dari, jaw, no, my jaw Google Gemini on-prem right. for Dell customers. Right. Amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we, we, we talked about that at length uh, when Pat and I were doing the post-mortem on the keynote itself. We talked about the partners, and that was one area that both of us really seemed to feel very strongly about was the partnership with Google and what that says, how they're sort of enabling, you know, because Google has every reason to not do that realistically. And they do it because I think they see what you see, the size of the opportunity, the size of the market, 85% of that data sitting on-prem. And of course, wanting to be realistic about what a partnership looks like and what an enterprise yeah. looks like. Arthur, as we only have a moment left here, I would love to kind of know for all the customers, I mean, what an attendance, what a group, hard to get around this place. Thankfully, it's a large center. <laughs> but like, what do you want customers that spend time with you at Dell Technologies World to really walk away with this week? Look, we, we want them to walk away with this is, an, is, this is a revolution and a redesigning of data centers that is picking up steam. And, you know, our AI factories sit at, you know, the center of, you know, this revolution. You know, we've taken the learnings from the largest CSPs and applied it all the way down for all these enterprise deployments. We have AI factories across every vertical, every industry, every use case. And you know, we just want customers to know that they can sit down with us because with us, they're not just ready for the future, they're defining the future. Well, Arthur, I want to thank you so much for joining us today here at Dell Technologies World, day one. Uh, we always love having you on the 6.5. Uh, let's do it again soon. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank and, you. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this 6.5 on the road here at Dell Technologies World 2025. We're going to step out for a minute, but we'll be back, we'll be back and we'll talk to you soon.